Baldy sent me a problem here to do. Perfect. So, uh, so what does it ask? Is, it, is this 3, 4? Rinaldi is just asking for a derivative? Yeah. So this is 3.4, number, thir number 26. And I like, if you're doing an even problem and, and you're, you can't verify that you have the right answer, um, you can go to uh, Symbol Lab. Uh, it'll do any derivative for you. You can go to Mathway, you can go to Photomath, right? All of these things, these, these little cheater ways of, of doing problems without actually knowing what the hell you're doing. Um, you can, you can always do that. Um, so, and I do believe the uh, Learning Center has a complete solution manual. So if you're working on evens, you can ask someone in there, uh, do you have the solution manual for Calc 1? Right, so you could take a look at that, that's true. So, but let's do this. I'm gonna call it f of x, and it's the square root of one plus sine of x over 1 plus cos of x. The original problem is a function of t, but I don't like the t's. The t's start to look like plus signs, and right? Um, so we want to find f prime of x. Uh, so, I, so is it a product rule? No. Is there a quotient rule involved? Yeah, inside, right? So when I do the derivative inside, I have to I have to do the quotient rule, and but I know a square root derivative. I already know a square root derivative, right? So so I know f prime of x is one over two square roots. Keep the cat in the box, right? Keep what's inside inside, and then times the derivative of the inside, which I'm going to do slowly by saying, hey, I still have to do the derivative of the inside. Right, so so I'm able to write a complete sentence here, right, without actually finishing that derivative, because now I'm going to use a, a quotient loop, right? Is that making sense here? Uh, uh, Jason, I got a homework to return to you. Uh, a seer, I got a, a handout for you. I just I'm tired of delivering. Will you give will you give that to a seer? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Everyone got the, the handout for the quiz on Friday? Yeah. Nice. So I, I want to do a little side work. I, I like to say side work, right? It's not like part of my conversation. It's I have to get some work to get this derivative of the inside, or I'll say Q loop or whatever, right? And then I'll box it up, right? So I get 1 plus sine x is my numerator. Derivative is what? Cos x, yeah. Downstairs is 1 plus cos x. Derivative is negative sine x. And I have to consider that downstairs squared, right? Uh, so I'm ready here. I've got my derivative as 1 over 2 square roots of 1 plus sine x over 1 plus cos x. And now that derivative of the inside piece it looks like it is, what, a cos x times a 1 plus cos x minus a negative sine x, so plus sine x, yes, you with me, times a 1 plus sine x. Everybody okay here? All over 1 plus cos x squared, cos x quantity squared. Yes, we okay? Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to try and factor as much as I can or, or simplify as much as I can. So I'm just going to, I have to, I have to mess around with that. Well, I don't know the right way to go, but I do trust my algebraic instincts, right? Or all the training I've done. I'm going to just distribute things there. Uh, I also see that I have, I, I have a keep change flip here. So I have one plus cos x uh, in the square root now in the numerator and two square roots of one plus sine x. Do you see that for the first part here? Right, you see you have a fraction within a fraction. We get rid of that with keep change flip, right? And then I'm distributing, so I get cos x plus cos squared x plus sine x plus sine squared x all over a 1 plus cos x 
quantity squared. I don't know if I need to foil that downstairs piece out yet. I'm waiting. Uh, what do you see? You see anything? You see cos x cos squared x plus sine squared x, right? What is what does that become? One, right? So now I have one plus cos x plus sine x over one plus cos x quantity squared. Uh, I, I think maybe expanding, but because I, because I see these two shared pieces, right, I'm thinking maybe I don't have to expand here. So I'm, I'm making my best guess here. I'm going to get 1 plus cos x plus sine x over 2 square roots of 1 plus sine x times 1 plus cos x to what power? What power do I want here? Say again? Nope. I have a second power downstairs, right? I agree. But upstairs I have a half power. So so four so two minus one half, right? Two minus one half. So four halves minus one half, so three halves. And and so I'm I'm thinking that that's it. I might check I might just check on on uh symbol lab real quick. It's almost like a uh, symbol ab, <laughs> symbol lab derivative uh, and what did I have? I had square root of, right? Yes, fraction, where's my fraction? Uh, Rinaldi, one plus sine x on top, yeah? Say again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then I hit go. And you see, they didn't distribute the numerator. Mine's a little bit better. But I have the same denominator as me, right? Uh, What's the other one I like? Um, the other one I like is Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is also very good. Does all the steps for you, everything. Millian, I, I recorded everything, so you didn't miss anything. Okay. Remember, if you're running a little late, you know I'm doing. I'm answering questions. It's no big deal, right? I never do quizzes at the beginning. Of the class. <laughs> That's a practice for the quiz on Friday. Okay. Oh, Anik, sorry. I recorded everything. <laughs> you just sat. He sat in Millian's chair. <laughs> sorry. Good. Anything else you're sending me to do? Anything else you're sending me to do? Rinaldi, where do you think you got screwed up there? Or where, where, did, where did it? Yeah, so we want, we definitely want, guys, hold on, please. We definitely want our, all our trig identities memorized, right? If you go to Calc 2 with someone that doesn't give you a formula sheet, you got to have all this stuff memorized, okay? So, so memorized at least on the on your formula sheet, right? All of the things you learned in pre-cal, everything, right? If you need help with it, let me know. I'm happy to help, right? I can take I can take 8 pages and put them on 4 pages per side onto one sheet, right? I, I could do I could do 16 pages and I'll allow a magnifying glass on the test. Okay? So, so I don't care what you do, but you've got to be organizing this stuff 
for your use. You don't want to just blindly do it. You want to think about, what, what if he gives me a problem like this? What if, I, what if he asks for continuity? Do I know the definition? Do I know a step-by-step -step process, right? Nice. Uh, uh, Daniel, you asked me to do one of these, pro or a couple of these problems on the, uh, which one do you like? Which one do you want to do first? Which one? Three? Sure. I like three a lot. If you, if you look at my old exams, you'll see number three on almost all of them. So this is a, a quiz 9, 10, 11, 12, quiz 9 to 12 practice. Uh, number three, yes. Uh, I have f of x equals x e to the minus x squared over two. So I want to find f prime and f double prime. And we can talk about this in, in the aspect of chapter four as well, meaning critical values. And when we start chapter four uh, tomorrow, uh, Friday, when we start chapter four Friday, all I'm asking you for are derivatives and critical values. And I think you know what the critical values already are. It's when the derivative is zero or the derivative is undefined. That means where the derivative is, the numerator of the derivative is zero or the denominator of the derivative is zero, right? So I don't think 4.2 will hurt you at all. 4.3 will only hurt you because you'll get a headache from it. So I'm telling you, for Monday morning, make sure you take some Advil or something. I would say 500 milligrams, about, about quarter to 10, you should be fine. Because it's, chapter four is horrible. Just a nuisance. Um, and then Wednesday we, we review next week, and Friday we take our test, right? And then I'm, I'm hoping to have your, your, your actual course grade posted uh, sometime, sometime Friday. But I'll send out an announcement to Blackboard messages, and it should come to your email, right? And then I want you to do nothing over spring break, unless, of course, you're in a panic of, over some other class. But try and take some time for yourself over spring break, right? Nice. I, 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 I know what this function looks like. If you don't know what the function looks like, you're going to always uh, graph it, right? So the function looks kind of like this. It's, a, it's really a beautiful, beautiful function. Likes a nice road to drive on. You agree? That would be fun to drive on. Almost like the George, uh, the Gump, George Washington Memorial Parkway. Have you been on that ever? Really windy, right? A little too bumpy right now, but... Um, so, um, so we should see from our first derivative, what? What will we see in our first derivative? Say again? There's two slopes that have a slope of what? Zero. So when I have a derivative with a, with, where, when it equals zero, I'll have possible tangent, horizontal tangent lines. Drive on that road for me. Yes? How many times are you changing your steering? Drive left to right. How many times are you changing your steering? Originally, I'm turning to the right. Yes? That's concave down. Right? So I'm, so there, I, but I have to be changing. So now, then do you see I'm turning back to the left? That's concave up. Right? Then I'm back down again. That's concave down. And then I'm back up again, that's concave up. So how many times do I change my steering? Not four. Three, change it, right? So from right to left or left to right, that's a change. And so I have three spots where the second derivative should be equal to zero. Three spots where the second derivative, this is chapter four stuff, but you can handle it. All I'm talking about is find the zeros, right? We've been doing that forever, right? Nice. So first derivative, what rule? Product rule and always chain rule, right? And 
recorded everything from the world now. So. <coughs> Everybody's got the homework four. Yes? Do Monday. All right, so first function is x, derivative is one, second function is e to the minus x squared over two, derivative is e to the minus x squared over two, right? We know the derivative of an e to the x function, yes? But then we have to also do the derivative of the inside, right, and that's minus uh, sorry, minus x. So just a real quick little side note. The derivative of minus x squared over 2, right, is minus 2x over 2, which is minus x, right? Yeah, agreed? Yeah? So our first derivative uh, comes from e to the minus x squared over 2 plus, I'm sorry, minus x squared, yes? e to the minus x squared over 2. That one's a little bit easier to deal with for the second derivative, but of course when I, when I want a derivative, I want it factored completely. So I see I can take out, oh, minus x squared over 2, right? Sorry, minus x squared, right? Sorry, yes, you agree, Min uh, minus x squared? So I could factor out an e to the minus x squared over 2, and I get a 1 minus x squared. And of course, that factors even more, right? But I certainly can see the critical here. What do I put on my critical? I got, I got my ears in. I can hear things I don't want to hear. <laughs> like I, I walk, I can hear my knees cracking. What are, what are the criticals? What x's make that zero, please? One and negative one. One and negative one, right? And, and I certainly could factor it even more, and I wouldn't mind at all seeing uh, e to the minus x squared over 2 times 1 plus x times 1 minus x. A little bit easier to see plus and minus 1 now, right? You agree? Hello? Yeah. Uh, just looking at that on, on Desmos real quick. I've got f of x equal to x e raised to the negative x squared over 2. There's my original function, and then I just found the criticals of negative 1, comma, f of negative 1, and there's my low point. There's a, a tangent line there of slope of 0, right? And you can see the other one, right, without me putting it in. Yeah. Nice. Let's see if we can find our turning points. I call them turning points. It's probably not correct. Our, they're called inflection points where I'm changing concavity, where I'm changing the steering on my car. So we want to go second derivative. I'm going to use this one to do my second derivative. So f double prime of x. Uh, if you can see, I've already, done, I've already done this derivative once, so I don't have to think too much about, the, about redoing it, right? I get minus x e to the minus x squared over 2. Agreed? I did that already, yes? And now I'm doing a product rule for the, for the second piece, right? So product loop. I've got, uh, I've got uh, my first function in my product is negative x squared. Does everybody see where I'm working here? Yeah. Derivative is negative 2x. The other function is e to the minus x squared over 2. Oh, I, I know that one, right? That's, that's negative x e to the minus x squared over 2. We did that three times already, right? And I'm looking at the product loop here. So I've got, uh, looks like, uh, positive x cubed e to the uh, minus x squared over 2 
minus 2x e to the minus x squared over 2. Is this okay, Daniel? Yeah. Is it easy? No. Stay organized, stay neat, use paper. Don't start squeezing things in. Again, I have paper here if anyone needs it. I'm asking you to use paper. When you get your job and start making $100,000 a year, go plant a couple of trees for Calc 1, four trees for Calc 2, okay? I can combine a couple of things here. Do you see that? I have, a, I have a negative 1 and a negative 2 of x e to the, right? So that's what? Negative 3, right? Yes? Negative 3x e to the minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed e to the minus x squared over 2. And I can now factor out uh, an x and an e to the minus x squared over 2. And I like to factor out the negative. So negative x e to the minus x squared over 2 times the quantity. What's left in the first piece? 3, yep, minus x squared, right? And of course, that factors a little more. That is what? Difference of squares there. Do you see it? Square root of 3 minus x, square root of 3 plus x. So what are the zero, what are the critical values of the second derivative? What, what makes this zero? Negative square root of 3. What makes this zero? Square root of 3. What makes this zero? The 3 is critical to the second derivative. Into Desmos, let me put in that 0, f of 0. And you should see one of my places where I'm changing from concave up to concave down. Right? Do you see it? Let's put in a square root of 3. And you see another place where I change from concave down to concave up. Right? So you see how ch chapter 4 just adds this little piece to begin with. Find me the derivative, find me the second derivative, find me the criticals. Nice, anything else on that? How, how, you do, how, so you're not, you're not, you didn't copy that, right, did you? Did you copy all that work? Because you got to do it again. Yeah, copying it is not the same as writing it yourself. Right? Which is why I'm saying rewrite your notes. It gets in your brain another way, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get all this stuff into your brain until you're done with differential equations and you can forget it all. If you're a math major, you'll never forget it. Uh, so, Ronaldo, you've got to start thinking about what kind of math you're going to study. Applied math? Pure math? Or data science? Right? Um, for all of them, you'll take the same exact classes in, as an undergrad. And then graduate school will, will change. Anything else on that practice quiz? Two? Uh, so I've got y equals 2x minus 1 quantity squared, x squared minus 1 quantity squared. This one you should be racing me, not copying me. I need a product rule, and I always need a chain rule, right? First function is 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Derivative is 2 times 2x minus 1 times another 2. Where the hell did that second 2 come from? Derivative of the inside. Right? Second function of my product is x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Derivative is 2 times the quantity of x squared minus 1 times another 2x. Agreed? Calculus is over. Now we do algebra. So y prime, right? And this is my side work or my product loop, right? 
uh, is going to give me what? 4x times 2x minus 1 quantity squared times an x squared minus 1 plus a, a 4 times a 2x minus 1 uh, times an x squared minus 1 quantity squared. Is that okay with everybody? Anybody? Is it okay with anybody? Yeah. Okay. So one person, two people. Three, four, five, six, that's seven, thank you. Seven out of 20, 22 is not bad. Seven out of 23 is not bad. Wait, we're missing Nahom. Who else is missing? Jason Z is missing. Oh, Jason Z is here. Sorry, Cyril's missing. <laughs> I'm pretty dumb sometimes. You'll you'll get used to me. Darimatu is missing. Good. I can factor. What do you see? I can factor out a four. Yeah. I can factor one power of two x minus one, and one power of x squared minus one. Right. So I can take out a four, I can take out one power of two x minus one and one power of x squared minus one. What's left from the first piece? What's left from the first term? Yes, another two x minus one and an x, right? You agree? So x, two x minus one. What's left from the second group? X, x squared minus 1, right? And it's by itself. I don't even need parentheses on it, right? So I get 4 times 2x minus 1 times an x squared minus 1 times a 2x squared minus x plus x squared minus 1. Looking like y prime is 4 times 2x minus 1 quantity x squared minus 1 quantity 3x squared minus x minus 1. I think I'm done. I want to double check that that last piece doesn't factor. And it doesn't. I, so I give you 9 out of 10 for this answer. Because it can factor a little more. Do you see it? I got an x plus 1, x minus 1 here, right? What are the critical values? One, one half, yep. Minus negative one, positive one, and then I don't know, but I do know that x would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four a c all over two a Uh, what is that? 12, 13, square root of 13. So those are those are critical numbers, but they're irrational, right? So if I get irrational criticals, I'm not expecting you to factor it, but if I did ask for criticals, you have to check and see if there are criticals there. So you could use quadratic formula. You could complete the square. You could do anything you want there. But in that case, we wouldn't factor it. Only if I asked you criticals would you have to find them. Quadratic formula okay? Is it on your formula sheet? Probably doesn't need, I mean if you did algebra one and algebra two, you did, and if you did trig, you did quadratic formula, right? If you did pre-cal, you did quadratic formula. So hopefully by now you have it. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I, like I said, this is this is a nine out of ten for me, right? Because I'm going to tell you, I want you to find me the derivative completely factored. Nine out of ten is fine. Six out of ten, you're you're still passing the class, right? Cool. Good. Let's do uh, our last section in chapter three. Um, 
and then we'll be done for today. I only have about, what, 40 minutes, plenty of time. This is not on the exam. So if you don't want to copy it down, I'm okay with that. Anytime you see me talking about the LN trick, that's what I'm doing here. If you want to show me something a little special, so you've got the whole test done, right? And you've checked it all, you know it's right, and you have time left. If you want to show me that you can use this LN trick on a problem, I'll give you extra credit, okay? So uh, this, this particular problem is perfect to do the LN trick with. And so I'll, sh I'll show you that in a second. First thing I have to do is teach you how to get the derivative of the LN of a function of, of X, LN of a function U. So, so here we go. We're talking about section 3.7 here. And it's my, my title, the LN trick. We already know that y equals the ln of x has a derivative of what? 1 over x, right? But I never taught you how that's true, and that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to teach you how this particular piece gets me, um, uh, gets me this solution. And then what's more important, y equals the ln of u right gives me y prime is u prime over u this is this is the one we want from now on and do you agree that that works that works for the original problem here what's the inside for 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 this green box what's the inside function x what's the derivative of x so derivative of the inside over the inside. Do you see that? Derivative of the inside over the inside. So that's our formula that we want to know for ln. Right? Derivative of the inside over the inside. Yes? So the way we actually uh, do it is we say, well, y equals ln of x um, is e to the y equal e to the ln of x, right? I raise both sides to base what? e. I raise both sides to base e. And what's the relationship between e to the x and ln of x? What's their, what's their relationship to each other? Say again. Uh, not one. You said one? No, not one. x. They're inverse operations. They cancel each other out, right? When you compose inverse functions together, right, everything falls apart, and all you get left is that original inside. So I get so I get e to the y equals just plain old x. You remember doing that in pre-cal? All those composition of functions, and when you compose inverse functions together, everything falls apart, right? So now I'm going to take the derivative d dx of e to the y equals d dx of x. And on the left, I get e to the y times y prime. And on the right, I get 1. So meaning y prime is 1 over e to the y. But what is e to the y? x. And with the function inside, it's, again, the derivative of the function over the, the derivative of the inside function over the inside function. So, for example, if I say y equals the ln of uh, x squared minus x, you know that y prime is what? What's the derivative of the inside? 2, two x minus 1, and what is the inside? x squared minus x. So, so there's, right, derivative of the inside over the inside. So that's what you need to remember for ln. Derivative, I, and so uh, some, the book will use log base 2, log base 10, etc. I only use log base e. I only use the ln because it's too much. It's just too much to remember. So if I give you any kind of function uh, for a, a log function, it will be the ln function, okay? 
All right, let's take a look at that same problem we just did, but using the ln trick. I haven't really told you the ln trick, but it's, it means take the ln of both sides, right? So I'm looking back at this handout I gave you, right? And I'm looking at uh, y equals 2x minus 1 quantity squared times x squared minus 1 quantity squared. And I'm going to take the ln of both sides. So I get the ln of y equals the ln of this whole mess. Um, and you remember from your pre-cal days I'm, get, I'm having a memory issue here. Let me get rid of Desmos. Ah, come on, memory. Yes, so you remember from your, you remember properties of logs. Properties of exponents, properties of logs. We remember, oh my God, my pen is, my pen is, my tablet is, uh, got a little brain on it. Let me do this. 